Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about chapter 2, section 5, modeling with linear functions. So essentially this section is going to be a review of what we talked about in 2.1, um, but we're going to do some more in-depth examples where um, we are interpreting real-world situations in a linear context and answering some questions. Alright, so here's our first situation. We're planting a tree says, okay, you plant a tree in early spring. When you plant the tree, it was blank feet tall. The tree grows at a constant rate. Every year it grows blank feet. And so we're supposed to use the given information to fill in um, this real world uh, scenario, the equation, the graph, and our check for understanding here. Now, we're given the table right here. And what we can see is that every three years, Every three years, what's happening is um, we're increasing by two. So we're increasing by two as, as x increases by three. So because we're increasing by a constant rate per unit of time, this is linear, right? So this is going to be, when we graph this, it's going to be in the shape of a line. Um, so what we need to know is, first of all, what is the slope of this line? And uh, what is the y-intercept? Right? So we need b and we need m. And so for m, what we can do uh, is we can choose some ordered pairs here to figure out what our slope is. So I could choose these two, for example, right? I can say uh, 0 comma 2 could be our first point, x1, y1. And I could say that my second point is x2, y2, which in this case is 3 comma 4. But you could have used any other point on here as well. Um, so for our slope, we're going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, giving us... 2 over 3. Alright, so that's our slope. And our y-intercept occurs when x is 0. We can see that in the table, right? We can see that our y-intercept is going to be 2, right? Because when x is 0, y is 2, therefore b is 2. And that's all we need for our equation. So our equation is going to be y equals m, which is 2 over 3, 2 over 3, x plus 2. And so going back to this real world scenario, um, what, are, what, what are the answers going to be here based on this equation that we found? Um, so when you planted the tree, how tall was it? That's the initial value aka the y-intercept when x is 0. So the initial value here, when you planted the tree, we see that that occurs when x is 0. Um, and so the and our time is going to be years, so that's our unit of x. So at year 0, if we were to plug in 0 into this equation, we would get 2. Right? So um, initially it's 2 feet tall, our y-intercept. And the constant rate that it grows is going to be the slope. Right? So it's going to grow 2 out of 3. Well, what would the units be for that? So... Um, you know, keep in mind what your independent and your dependent variable, the units for that is. So x, our time unit, is in years. We can see that from the situation. So this is, so x is in years. And then y, our output, is going to be how tall it is in feet, right? So this is going to be feet. And therefore, our slope, because we're doing y minus y over x minus x, we know that the top is going to have units in feet, right? Because that's y. And the bottom is going to have units in years, because that's x. Okay, so feet per year is the, uh, is the units here. So this is going to be 
Um, you know, we can say it in two different ways. We can say that it's growing two feet per three years, or we can say that it's growing two thirds of a foot per one year. That's how we typically talk about slope. So it's growing two thirds feet per year. So every year that passes by, it grows two thirds of a foot. Okay. All right. So we got that part down. Now we can graph this stuff and we can graph this pretty easily with our table. That's right here. So when X is zero, Y is two. That's going to be right here. Uh, when X is three, Y is four. So that's going to be right here. Uh, six, six is our next one. So that's here. 9, 8, and 12, 10. Okay, so those are the points, and we can just <clears throat> connect the dots to graph our function here. All right, and now let's go ahead and answer these check for understanding questions. It says, after seven years, how tall will the tree be? Well, unfortunately, we don't have seven in our table right here, but we do have a little function rule that will tell us whatever we need to know. So after seven years, how tall will the tree be? Now, Y is our output, how tall it will be, and X is our input, how many years have passed. So we're going to plug in seven for X into our function rule right up here. So when X is seven, we get Y is equal to two thirds times seven plus two. And that's going to give us, let's see, 14 thirds plus two. Um, oh, that's going to give us 20 thirds. So 20 thirds. And our units, because we're evaluating a function, we're getting a y value out, our unit is going to be in feet. So 20 thirds feet tall. How many years until the tree is 12 feet tall? So are we looking for x or are we looking for y? Well, we're looking for x, right? We're looking for the unit of time. How many years? So we want to know what is x when y is 12. So when y is 12, well, we can again use our function rule up here. We're just plugging in 12 for y. So we get 12 equals 2 thirds x plus 2. And what I can do is I can solve for x at this point. So maybe I'll write it down here. We have 12 equals 2 over 3 x plus 2. Let's go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides to give us 2 thirds x equals 10. And now what I'm going to do to get rid of this, you can divide both sides by 2 thirds if you'd like, but you can also multiply by 3 over 2 to cancel things out in one swift motion. Right, because these threes cross cancel, these twos cross cancel, and we're left with x is equal to 10 times 3 over 2 is 30 over 2, which is 15. All right, so that's our answer here. So how many years until the tree is 12 feet tall? That's going to be 15 years. That's our answer there. All right, let's try another one. All right, so this time we're not given the table. Uh, but we are given a graph, and so we need to use this graph to fill in the table, get an equation, and fill out our scenario here. So I'm looking at my table, and they give us the x values, so I want to know what those corresponding y values are. So I'm going to look at my graph. I'm going to find first when x is 0, I have a y there. When x is 2, that's right here, I have a y here. When x is 4, I have a y here. x is 6, got that right there. And when x is 8, um, there we go, right there. Let's see, oh, that was x is 5. This should be x is 6 right here. Okay, so now I have all my ordered pairs listed. 
So the first one, when x is 0, what is the corresponding y value? Well, that's at a height of 4. So that's going to be 4, right? This is 0, 4. Um, this guy has an x value of 2 and a height of... Uh, actually, the, I'm sorry, that, the first one was 3. That was 3, and, then, and 2 is actually at 4, a height of 4. Um, now we have x equals 4, that's a height of 5. Okay, when x is 6, that's right here, we have a height of 6. And when x is 8, we have a height of 7. Okay, so I'm just looking at the corresponding y values to fill out that table. All right. So now we need to figure out what the equation is. Well, it's pretty, we know what the y-intercept is, right? Right off the bat, we can see that our y-intercept is 3. That occurs when x is 0. Now we need to figure out what the slope is. So again, slope is y minus y over x minus x. And just to keep things simple, I'll, I'll again pick the first two points. So... Um, I'll do 2, 4 as, maybe I'll write it up here, I'll say 2, comma 4 is x2, y2, and then I'll say 0, comma 3 is x1, y1, and then using my slope formula, I get 4 minus 3 over 2 minus 0, which is 1 over 2. All right, so my slope is 1 over 2, and that's all I need to define a line. So my, my equation of this line is going to be y equals m, which is 1 half, x plus 3. Okay, so that's my equation there. All right, so now let's look at this real-world scenario. It says it's the middle of winter. It's a ri There's originally how many inches of snow on the ground? Originally... That means the initial value, that means the y-intercept. So um, we look at the y-intercept, and that's 3, so 3 inches of snow originally on the ground. Then the snow falls at a constant rate, a.k.a., you know, that's this is going to tell us what our slope is. The rate at which the snow falls is blank inches per hour. So the slope is the constant rate that's this number in front of x, so that's one half. One half inches per hour is what the slope is there. Okay, so how much slope, or sorry, how much snow was on the ground when the blizzard started? Again, that is the initial value, okay? So that's the um, y-intercept. So we already answered that, that's three inches. Um... After 11 hours, what is the total amount of snow on the ground? Well, again, our unit of time is x, so that's that's in hours this time. So we're trying to see what is y when x is equal to 11. Well, we use this equation right here. We say, okay, uh, we have y is equal to 1 half times x, which in this case is 11, plus 3. So y is equal to 11 halves plus 3. 11 halves is 5.5, so that's going to be 8.5. So 8.5 what? Inches, because that is our, our output is in inches, and our um, input is going to be in hours. And that's why our slope, the units for our slope are in inches per hour, y over x. All right, so the next situation we're dealing with is eating ribs. And again, we're given a table of values that we can use to uh, graph this function and come up with our equation. So the first thing is we see the y-intercept when x is 0, y is 20. So that is our first clue for our equation. And we can figure out the slope um, with our formula. So I'm going to just pick the first two points, just to keep it simple. Uh, x1 is 0, y1 is 20, x2 is 2, 
and y2 is 16. So then I'm going to use my slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our slope is going to be negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. All right, so we know our y-intercept, we know our slope, therefore our equation is y equals negative 2x plus 20. All right? Okay, so now we have our equation. Um, we can definitely go ahead and graph these points on our graph. So first of all, 0 comma 20 is going to be up here. 18, 19, 20, that's right there. Then 2 comma 16 is going to be um, right here. Followed by 4, 12. Six, eight, um, and eight, four. So that is going to be right here. All right, so there is our linear function. We can see that as time goes on, so as the minutes pass, the number of ribs decrease, which makes sense. You're eating you're eating them, right? So and so looking at this real world scenario, it says you have a large plate and you eat them at a constant rate. What? How many ribs did we have originally? Well, that's our y-intercept. That's our initial value. And that's going to be 20. So we this is where we start. We start at time equals zero with 20 ribs. So we have 20 ribs to begin with. And we're going to eat them at a rate of how many ribs per minute? Well, that's the slope, right? So that's going to be, we could write negative 2, but it, it makes more sense if we just put 2 since we're dealing, I mean, negative 2 ribs per minute, what does that even mean, right? Um, since this is kind of in a, a real world context, we're just going to say we're eating them at a rate of 2 ribs per minute. Um, okay, so now for these check for understanding questions. After eating ribs for six minutes, how many ribs do you have left to eat? Okay, so this is the y value, number of ribs left, and we're interested what happens at six minutes. Well, we can look at the graph or the table, tells us we don't have to do any plugging into the equation. Um, after six minutes, we're going to have eight ribs left, right? We can see that on the graph as well, um, right here. So number of ribs left is going to be eight and that occurs after six minutes have passed. How long does it take for you to eat all of your ribs? All right, so what's, what does that mean? Well, that means when there's zero ribs left. Okay, that means when y equals zero. How long is it going to take? Well, we have to go ahead and use this equation right here because we don't have y equals zero in our table. So I'm going to let y equal 0, and I'm going to solve for x. I have negative 2x plus 20, and we'll go ahead and isolate x. So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides first to give me negative 20 equals negative 2x, and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 to give me x equals 10. So our x value is in minutes. Um, so that's going to take 10 minutes. That is our answer there. All right, so we have, this time we have the equation, and we want to fill out the table based on that and everything else. So they give us the x values for our table, and let's go ahead and fill out the y values. So when x is 0, we're using this equation to get y equals negative 1 half times 0 plus 14. This goes to 0, 0 plus 14 is just 14. Okay. Um, the next value is x equals 1, so we have negative 1 half, negative 1 half times 1 plus 14. So that's 14 minus 1 half, and that's going to be 13 and a half. Okay, so that's 13.5. And what you're going to find is that, you know, we're, we're going to be decreasing. Because these things are increasing by 1, 
the next number that's going to come up is uh, your previous number minus a half because that's our rate of change. You can do it by hand if you want, but you know we're just subtracting a half each time because that's our slope. And the reason that we're um, the reason that we can do that trick is because the x values go up by one. All right, so um, so anyway, thirteen point five minus point five is going to be thirteen. Minus a half is 12.5. Minus a half is 12. Okay, so that's our table. Uh, we can graph this. Unfortunately, we have decibels, which whatever, you know, it is what it is. Um, we could, let's see, I wonder, do we have to actually graph the table or should we graph some other points? Mm. Well, let's just graph the table. We're just going to have to have half numbers. It's cool, though. Um, first one, when x is 0, y is 14. So that occurs right here. When x is 0, y is 14. When x is 1, y is 13.5. So that is going to be, let's see, right here. Uh, when x is 2, y is 13. When x is 3, we have 12 and a half. Uh-oh, did I not? Let's see. Actually, I'm going to start over. I think I messed this up. So that's here. 1, 13.5. That's here. There we go. That looks a little bit better. 2, 13. 3, 12 and a half. Uh, 4 is 12. Okay, so that's good enough. And there's our graph. Alright, so the real world scenario, the cost to play any arcade game is the same. Tommy has taken all of his money and gone to arcade. How much did he originally have? Originally, keyword, initial value, um, y-intercept. All right, so how much did he originally have? That's our y-intercept, which is 14. So he had $14 to start off. And how much did each game cost? Well, he had $14, and as he plays his games, the amount of money that he has decreases, right? We can see that from the slope, right? As... As the number of games he plays increases, the amount of money he has decreases. And how much money is he losing per game? Well, that's our slope, right? That's how much money he's losing per game. And so it looks like each game costs minus one half. In money terms, a half, a dollar, is 50 cents, right? So each game is going to cost 50 cents. It makes sense, right? He has $14 to start off with. He plays one game. Now he has $13.50. He plays another game. Now he has $13. Plays another game and so forth. So we can see that he's losing $0.50 cents per game. Okay, so each game costs $0.50. Cents. Um, Check for understanding. After playing nine games, how much money is he going to have left? <clears throat> well, uh, the x value is the number of games, right? That's the x-axis. So when x is equal to nine, the question is, what is y? And we can use our equation up here to answer that. So when x is equal to nine, what is y? Well, y is going to be negative a half times nine plus 14. So that's going to be negative uh, 450 plus 14. So that's 950. So that's how much money he's going to have after nine games. Y is 950. Right. How many games can he play until he runs out of money? What does that mean? 
So we're looking for x. How many games? We know that x is our is our um, independent variable on our x-axis here. So how many games can he play? We're looking for x. Until he runs out of money, what does that correspond to y being? Well, that corresponds to y being 0, right? When he has 0 money, what is x? And again, we're just going to use this equation right here. We're going to say, okay, well, let me let y equal 0, and let's go ahead and solve for x. Subtracting, oops, that's a 14. Subtracting 14 from both sides, we get negative 14 equals negative 1 half x. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 2 to clear out that fraction. So that's going to give us x equals 28. So he can play 28 games until he runs out of money. Clint is buying large bottles of lemonade and small bottles of sodas for a party. Each bottle of lemonade costs $6 and each bottle of soda costs $2. He wants to spend exactly $40 on drinks. We're going to suppose that X is the number of bottles of lemonade and Y is going to be the number of bottles of soda he buys. So let's go ahead and write an equation to model this situation. So first of all, for the lemonade, we're using X to represent the bottles of lemonade, the number of bottles of lemonade. And each bottle costs $6, so altogether that's going to cost 6 times X, right? So that's, that's the lemonade part. So it's the lemonade. All right, and so that's the first part. Um, the, the next part is the soda. So the soda costs $2 a bottle, and uh, we're going to use Y to represent the number of bottles of soda he buys. So 2 times y, this is going to represent the soda part. And altogether, he wants this to come out to be $40. So equals $40. So this is an equation that would model this situation. And notice this is a linear equation because all we have are constants, x's and y's, and the highest power on the variable is 1. So that's a linear equation. Now, part B says, what is the slope of this equation? And what does that mean in terms of bottles of lemonade and bottles of soda? So we can take this equation and put it in slope intercept form to figure out what the slope is. So I can do that by isolating y. So I'll start by subtracting 6x from both sides. So I get 2y equals 40 minus 6x. Then I'll go ahead and divide everybody by 2. And so then I'm going to get y is equal to 20 minus 3x. So this is my equation in slope-intercept form. So what's the slope? So the slope is negative 3, but what are the units of the slope? Well, remember that slope is just the change in y over the change in x. Right? Change in y over change in x. And y is the number of bottles of soda. So this is so our units are going to be bottles of soda for y. And that's going to be over um, bottles of lemonade. And so what does this mean contextually? Like what does this mean in the context of our problem? Well, it means for, for every bottle of lemonade, So what this means contextually is that for every bottle of lemonade you buy, you should buy three less bottles of soda to keep the budget at $40.
Um, if you wanted to, you could make a table to see what this looks like. So we have x and we have y, which is 20 minus 3x. So again, x is representing the um, bottles of lemonade and y is representing the bottles of soda. So if we do 0, 1, 2, 3, and then we plug in x is 0, 20 minus 0 is 20. So if you buy 0 bottles of lemonade, you can buy 20 bottles of soda um, and keep the budget at $40. If you buy uh, 1 bottle of lemonade, if we plug in 1 in here, we get 20 minus 3 is 17. Okay, if we, if we plug in 2 for x, we get 20 minus 6, and that's 14. And if we plug in 3 for x, we're going to get 11 for y. So we can see that we have to decrease by 3 each time we buy um, another bottle of lemonade. All right, so that's kind of the context behind this problem. Now let's try this one. So in a dorm meal plan, you pay a membership fee, then all your meals are at a fixed price per meal. So it says that 100 meals cost $1,125 and 160 meals cost $1,440. We want to write a linear function that describes the cost of a meal plan C in terms of the number of meals N. So what does that mean? That last sentence is telling us what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable. When we say that we're writing C in terms of N, C in terms of N means that N is the independent variable. Okay, this is acting like x. And so c is the dependent variable acting like y. Okay, so <coughs> um, since that's the case, we can make some ordered pairs here and figure out what the slope is as well as our y-intercept. Okay, so we're thinking of n as x and we're thinking of c as y. Now, um, first of all, the first ordered pair that we have is this one right here. So what is going in our first slot and what's going in our second slot in the ordered pair? Well, remember, n is acting like x, which is our, our meals, and c is acting like y, which is the cost. So in the first slot um, is going to be 100, right, because that's, that's how many meals we're, we're buying. And in the second slot is our y value, which is 1,125. So that's one ordered pair. And the second ordered pair is over here. So here n is 160 and the cost is $1,440. Okay, and these are acting, you know, n is acting like our x, c is acting like our y. So how do we get the slope? Well, we do the same thing that we have been doing, but, um, you know, it's just instead of x, I wrote n right here. Instead of y, I wrote c. But it's the same idea. We're just going to do... Um, y minus y over x minus x. So our slope is going to be y. So this is like my y2 right here. This is my my x2. This is x1, y1. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, let's compute this. Okay, so I'm getting 5.25. So that's our slope. So that's M. And now we need to figure out what our B is by using one of these points. I'm going to use this point right here to figure out what B is. So, <clears throat> um, you know, we do it like we've always done it. Y equals MX plus B. And we're solving for B. Now we know what M is. M is, M is 5.25. 
and we have an x comma y. So we have x is a 160 corresponding to the output value of 1440. And we just figured out that m was equal to 5.25. So let's use this information to now find b. And then we'll be able to write our equation. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase some of this stuff just to make it look a little bit nicer. All right, so y equals mx plus b. So y, we have 1, 4, 4, 0 equals m times x plus b. And we'll go ahead and solve for b. Okay, so 5.25 times 160, we get 840 plus b is equal to 1440. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract 840 from both sides and get my y-intercept of 600. All right, so now we have our slope, we have our y-intercept, let's write our linear function. So again, instead of y, I'm using c, okay, so just keep that in mind. I have y equals m, which is 5.25 times x, and remember, instead of x, I'm using n. So x plus b, which is 600. So that is our linear equation. Again, instead of y, we're using c. Instead of x, we're using n. That is our linear equation that represents the um, cost of a meal plan. That's the cost of the meal plan for a certain number of meals. Okay. So what is, the, what is the cost per meal and what is the membership fee? What is the cost per meal and what is the membership fee? Well, um, the membership fee is how much you're going to pay given you don't buy any meals, right? So the membership fee, the membership fee is basically the initial value or the y-intercept. So this is when n equals zero, the number of meals equals zero. So we have the cost is going to be 5.25 times zero plus 600. And of course, this first term goes to zero, and we're just left with 600. So the membership fee is 600. Membership fee is 600 bucks. And what is the cost per meal? Well, that's going to be the slope, right? I mean, you could make a table if you wanted to, if you wanted to see it. We have n and c, 0, 1, 2. If I plug in 0 for n, I get the 600 for c. If I plug in 1 for n, I get 600 plus 525. So that's 605.25. And if I, plug in, if I plug in 2 for n into this function right here, I get uh, 610.50. So this is the cost of two meals. All right, and you can see what's happening, right? We're going up by $5.25 for each meal that you get, right? This is the number of meals. We're going up by that much. So the cost per meal, the cost per meal is going to be the slope. It's going to be $5.25. Not a bad deal. Okay, so membership fee is 600, which was the y-intercept. Cost per meal is $5.25. And part C says find the cost for 140 meals. So assuming that we're paying, you know, the membership fee, um, how much is it going to cost me if I want to get 140 meals? Well, we're just going to use our formula here. So our formula says the cost of my meal plan is going to be 525 times n the number of meals plus 600. So n in this case is 140. That's the number of meals that I'm wanting to purchase. So my meal plan, n, yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, so my meal plan is going to be 525 times 140, just subbing 140 in for n, plus 600. And let me go ahead and compute this and see what we get. Okay, so I'm getting that the meal plan is going to be $1,335. And that is our answer for part C. 
Okay, what about part D? It says find the maximum number of meals. Okay, so we're looking for the number of meals. So what is N that you can buy on a budget of $1,545? So here C is going to be $1,545. And we want to figure out what N is. Well, again, we're just going to use our formula here. We're going to plug in C, which is 1545, equals 525 times N plus 600. And we're going to go ahead and solve for N. So if I subtract 600 from both sides, I'm getting 945 is equal to 525N. And then I'll divide both sides by 525. Okay, and so I'm getting I'm getting 180. So that is my answer here. Um, 180 meals you can buy on a budget of $1,545.